we really want to avoid uh, legalism. And I think that's exactly why uh, God doesn't spell it all out where, okay, if you do this and you live at this level and you do it this way, uh, then we wouldn't have to seek his guidance. We wouldn't have to go to him, get down on our knees. We wouldn't have to seek the wise counsel of Scripture and of other people. One thing that I would say in regard to that, I turn to First uh, Timothy chapter uh, 6, <clears throat> that I think has some tremendous uh, lifestyle uh, implications. Uh, and it says some things that maybe are a little bit surprising. Because... Earlier in 1 Timothy 6, he has said, Godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into the world. We can take nothing out of it. Materialism plunges you into destruction, all of this. But then he says in verse 17 of 1 Timothy, and remember, he's talking to a pastor, and he's saying this, Command those who are rich in this present world. Now, fill in the blank. What do you think he's going to say? Well, one thing he could have said is command those who are rich in this present world to no longer be rich. Give it all away. And God does call some people to do that, and we should not minimize that. If God called some people to do that in old times, he's calling some people to do it today. But he didn't call everybody to do that. So command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. So there's, there's a pride issue. Because uh, Scripture says that God not only entrusts to us wealth, he entrusts us the power to gain uh, wealth. And he gives us the abilities and the opportunities and all of that. Not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God. So one of the lifestyle-related things is, how much is it going to take for you to give away to God in order to fully trust him? And not be trusting on all the mechanisms that you have in place. Those mechanisms are not inherently wrong. But, but where's the trust? Where's the hope? Put your hope in God. Don't put your hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Now, this statement, uh, which is in um, 1 Timothy 6.17, I think is very helpful. God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. He makes clear that this is not legalism and it is not asceticism. And that's a very important distinction uh, early in Money, Possessions, and Eternity. I've got a couple of chapters on materialism, but I've got one chapter I think is very important on asceticism. And that there is a, a belief that some people have that there is an inherent virtue in abstaining from anything which is... Physical, and there's a whole bunch of things that have to do with dualism and, and uh, Gnosticism and a belief that um, a failure to recognize that God created the world and created things and God is not against things and God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment and then command them, here it is, to do good and to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and to be willing to share. And in this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. Now notice, all of those are principles that you have to figure out quantities and the form and the shape that it takes in your life. And you can guide people if you're in a counseling, pastoral, mentoring, just brother or sister in Christ type role. And certainly somebody asks your counsel, you can say, well, you know, if I were you, I think I'd sell that and give that to missions, but I think I'd keep that, then I'd do that. Fine, give that input, but you just can't get up, and Scripture just doesn't permit us to. It doesn't give us the basis for giving this list that says, you must do the following ten things in terms of money and possessions, then you'll be godly, then you'll be spiritual, and this is what the percentage has to be on top, above and beyond, free will giving. Well, free will giving by its very nature uh, you, you just can't put a tag on it that says it's this much. But I think we avoid the legalism by going to Scripture and saying, here it is, here's principle, and now we've got to figure out how to work out that principle in our individual lives.